You probably already know this by now, but it would seem like almost every other year, whether it's in November, December, January, or February, you would get these war slash military movies that serve not only to be action-oriented crowd pleasers, but to hopefully get nominated by the Academy for a ton of Oscars. Basically, they're just somewhat designed to be Oscar bait. When it comes to watching military movies, in my perspective, there are many different types of military movies that you can see, whether it's on DVD and Blu-ray or on the big screen. And let me categorize them for you guys. There is the good kind, the bad kind, the extremely overrated kind, the criminally underrated kind, and there are the other kinds of military movies that are incredibly flawed, but are still kind of entertaining nonetheless and are meant to be, you know, thrilling crowd pleasers. And I know what you're thinking, how does this movie that we're gonna review this week, 12 Strong, rank among these types of films? Well, like every other single review, let's talk about it. After the truly heartbreaking tragedy and disaster of the 9-11 attacks, the military sends down a team of 12 soldiers known as Task Force Dagger, a military platoon that is led by Chris Hemsworth that also features Michael Shannon, Trevante Rhodes, and Michael Pena. And this movie basically tells the unbelievably true story about how those men, along with several other Afghani allies, faced off against the Taliban in one of the most important turning points or battles in US military military history. So like I said before, how does 12 Strong rank among the best and the worst? If I would have to summarize this movie with just one sentence, it would probably be this. 12 Strong is basically the poor man's 13 hours. You guys remember 13 Hours, right? A Michael Bay movie that came out in middle of January? Now that's not me saying that 12 Strong is a terrible movie. It's not. As a straightforward action-oriented military movie meant to crowd please an audience, it's okay at best. But I think one of the biggest problems with this movie is, you know this movie is called 12 Strong, right? The thing is with the 12 Strong, you really don't care for any other character in this film other than one or two characters. The rest of them are just complete cliches of characters that we've seen from so many other military movies before this. These guys make jokes, they have pretty dirty personalities, they swear every now and then. Every single one of them has a tough guy, bro-ish kind of personality that you would see in like 80s action movies. And they have storylines that are basically some of the biggest cliches that you would see in military movies, and trust me, we'll get to the cliches. But as far as characters you do really care about, one of the characters that you do care about is Chris Hemsworth himself. With Chris Hemsworth, he has more than one personality rather than being the bro-ish, tough guy, military person. He has motivation. He's completely determined. He's wanted to do whatever it takes just so we can get back to his family, which, of course, is kind of a cliche. But still, it's one of those characters that you really care about because of his motivation, the drive, and everything that he's going through in this war. And not to mention that there's this character arc that he has with his Afghani general, played by Navid Nagaban. Their sense of camaraderie really works throughout the movie, and you feel their relationship. And you feel like even if this war is getting tough for the both of them because they're both from different countries and they really don't like each other, they still have to work together to solve this problem. And some of the camaraderie between them really does serve some powerful moments in this movie. There's a running thing with the general telling Chris Hemsworth character that he has the killer eyes, basically summarizing all of his determination and hatred against the Taliban, showing how he can fight like a warrior, not just based on the mind but on the heart. And just scenes like that between them really do work. And not to mention that the vast majority of the performances, even for characters that you really don't care about, aside from Chris Hemsworth and Navid Nagaban, Michael Shannon, Michael Pena, Trevante Rhodes, they do serve good performances in their roles, despite how completely paper thin their characters are. And when you're coming into a movie like this, you are expecting at least some well shot or well edited action in there, right? And surprisingly enough, there are. Of course, some of the action may be particularly cheesy, especially for the latter half of the film, but in terms of being well edited and well shot, it actually does work. It's very well shot, there's no shaky cam, you have beautiful shots of the Afghani terrain, and the editing isn't completely quick or choppy. It's evenly cut down and it's evenly well paced. Alright, now let's talk about the points that I'm really wanting to talk about about this movie. Aside from the movie having completely paper-thin characters, this movie has war movie cliches out the wazoo. Some of the cliches in the movie kind of work as far as the story goes, but as far as other cliches, some of them are completely ridiculous. They do the whole cliche of the military dad just basically saying to his family, I will be back, don't worry, I'll be fine. But hold on, that's not the ridiculous part. The ridiculous part is the reaction. In this movie, as Michael Shannon is packing up to go to a military base in Afghanistan saying goodbye to his wife, his son comes into the garage and just say, Dad, are you seriously leaving? Michael Shannon turns to his son and he's like, Son, I'm very sorry, I have to go, but promise me, I will come back, I swear. What happens next is that Michael Shannon's son gives him this reaction. 
and then he leaves. Like, seriously, kid? Your dad could die out there. What, like, not even a single hug or saying, I'm gonna miss you, dad, hopefully you come back later? No, nothing like that. He just gives him, like, a stink eye, and then he just walks off. And I was thinking to myself, okay, maybe this will be a supply, and eventually he'll come back and say, I'm sorry for what I did. No, that never happens again. That scene was basically there just to get an emotional rise out of you, and that's about it. And there are some cliches where Trevontanae Rhodes has, like, a guardian who's basically, like, this 11 or 12 year old kid, and they basically have, like, this banter back and forth, and I thought it was kind of okay. And you're like, of course I know exactly where this movie is going, but you still find it okay nonetheless. And speaking of cliches, how about the villain that this movie crowbars in? To be completely honest, if the villain was cut out of the movie, it wouldn't have changed a thing. This villain is basically kind of like a rival against Navid Nagabant's character, and his entire development and structure of being like this menacing villain is just comprised of one tiny single scene that basically says, Hey, look how evil I am. Look at me shoot this innocent person. Am I evil? It's just one of those things that make this movie completely kind of forced and generic. And the action in this movie is a bit cheesy. No, scratch that, never mind. It's incredibly cheesy. Especially when it gets to the film's climax. It's some of the most cheesiest things you've seen in a war movie. But here's the thing, as I was watching the movie, I was thinking to myself, you know what? I'm kind of digging this. I actually like this. Because usually I'm a guy for cheesy action movies. I mean, I love Commando, except this movie's not really Commando. It's a war movie based on true real-life events. But it's kind of cheesy in a way to where the Taliban's being portrayed by, like, stormtroopers from Star Wars where they can't hit the bright side of a barn, and they completely miss the United States soldiers completely without a scratch. That part kind of bothered me because there aren't really enough stakes for the action. But still, as I was watching the movie, I'm like, you know what, I'm a bit entertained by this, I'm not really gonna lie. So yeah, there is some enjoyment to spare in this movie when it comes to the action. Overall guys, 12 hours is exactly what I said in the beginning. If you're just looking for a straightforward, action-oriented military movie with some likable characters in there, then you may particularly have a good time with it. It's not as good as Black Hawk Down, it's not as good as, I don't know, 13 hours, but just as a straightforward military movie, it's kind of serviceable. While the characters are completely paper thin, and even two characters are completely redeeming in this movie, some of the performances in there are actually pretty solid, the action, while incredibly cheesy, is kind of entertaining, the cinematography is well shot too, the editing is evenly paced and well cut, and this movie from being somewhat sort of a kinda really enjoyable military movie, has military cliches like you wouldn't believe. So overall guys, in summation, I would have to say that 12 strong earns a two and a half out of five. All right, guys, that is my review of 12 strong. Comment below, let me know what you thought about the movie. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Also, if you want to see more reviews like this, be sure to subscribe for more. My name is Luke Newcomb, and you, my friends, have been blown away.